Get your money, don't care who judge Stay out the way, surround yourself with nothing but love Stay out the way, if you a gangster, killer or thug Stay out the way, put your faith in the man above Stay out the way, chill with your family, siblings and blood Stay out the way, kick it with your girl, forget hit in the club Stay out the way, mind on your money, ain't no switching it up Stay out the way, stand out the way, what you thought that it was Stay out the way, if you stuck down on your luck, not feeling righteous Did a petty crime, just looking for some excitement Now your name on affidavits and court indictments Can pay for a lot, but your freedom is priceless You did the crime, you do the time, don't let it surprise you Real stories from the heart, just to open your eyes up Yo, what's good y'all, what's going on, what's the word man How everybody doing out here Hope everybody had a great weekend, hope everybody week's been going good the weekend is almost here again, and we staying out the way. That's what we doing, man. We staying out the way over here, man. But first, I got to thank everybody who been turning me up. Turn me up, y'all. Turn me up. Turn me up. Turn me up. That's what we doing. Turn me up. Keep going. Never stop. Let it keep running up, because y'all know I'm going to deliver classes, man. I'm going to give y'all the bangers, because that's all I got. It's bangers. I got nothing but bangers, y'all. That's it. I promise you that. Told y'all. You switching over to Lawrenceville stories for a second. I'll get back to Susses in a little bit. I got a bunch of them. Y'all just hop in the car, go for a ride. I told y'all, man. And a lot of people have been saying, yo, you got long stories. And a lot of people have been saying, I like your long story. So it's kind of like even who, who don't like or who like. But at the end of the day, I got to give y'all how I got to give it to y'all. Like, I feel like I can't just go on my joint and chop it up and edit it all up and just deliver some content I feel that ain't the best coming from me. I want my joint to be raw and uncut. I want that raw and uncut classic. That's what I got to deliver, man. So sometimes y'all got to bear with me, man. You know, if it's too long, cut it off and go back. That's like listening to a part one when somebody give you a part one, you got to look at it the next day. You know what I mean? Cut my joint off. If it's too long, then go back. I be listening to all type of stuff and it might be longer than what my joints be. And when I'm listening to it, I'll listen to it at this part of the time of the day, and then I might finish it up this time of the day. Then I might be about to get in the shower, get myself together, and listen to the rest of it. When I get out of the shower, I might finish it. It depends. Like, at the end of the day, people are going to do their content how they're going to do their content, y'all. Y'all can't, like, expect people to do their content like everybody else do their content. My content is different. I'm unique. I'm coming with all type of different stuff. So, like, you know, the long story, it, might, it is what it is. Like, it's going to be that. I'm going to have sometimes where I break it up into two parts, but the two parts still going to be long stories. You know why? Because I'm giving y'all great content. That's what we doing. So all y'all got to do is just chill, relax, man. Just relax. Don't complain about a long story. Just know that the long story is great. Now, if you got a long story and it's some Garbino, that's when y'all complain. But I ain't, I feel like I, don't, I haven't delivered yet on Garbino. Ain't no Garbino coming out my mouth. All facts. So I just need y'all to relax and chill, man. Keep turning me up. Keep like, sharing, and subscribing. And we're going to rock out. That's what we're going to do. We're going to keep the ball rolling. Keep the ball rolling, man. That's what we're going to do. Now, tell me who's been staying out the way. I need y'all to stay out the way, y'all. I'm going to keep saying it. I'm going to keep yelling it. I'm going to keep telling y'all. Stay out the way, man. It's the best way to live. It's not a stress way to live. It's the best way to live. Y'all hear me? I'm going to say that again. It's not a stress way to live. It's the best way to live if you're staying out the way, man. You don't got nothing to worry about. You're living your life going through small stuff. It's everything. It's fixable. I promise y'all. It's a perfect life. And I love my life. And I want y'all to love y'all life too, man. Going back to the can, going back to jail, man. Like that jump. It's not a good look, fellas, man. You got to stay out the way, man. I know everybody got to do what they got to do out there, man. But at the end of the day, <clears throat> I wouldn't care if I was homeless. As long as I'm not back in jail, I'm straight. And that's real talk, man. I'm not going back to that place ever again, man. So I encourage all my dudes to stay out the way. Let's go, man, because that's what we're doing. But let's get to this wonderful story I got for y'all today, man. And this story I got for y'all today, y'all know we in Lawrenceville. So I got to give y'all a banger. I got to give y'all my craziest story I ever, the craziest thing I ever witnessed in Lawrenceville. That has to be how I start Lawrenceville off. Now, this story right here is about an officer named C.O. Green and an officer named Dauda. Now, C.O. Green and Dauda, Dauda, they worked at Lawrenceville. Now, when they when they first started working at Lawrenceville, we didn't know they was a pair. We didn't know they was together. We didn't know they had kids together or whatever the case was. Nobody knew this. Nobody. All dudes knew was this. A dude named Green started working up there 
And when he started working up there, we noticed that he was just one of these dudes that was just extra, extra, extra into his job as a rookie. <clears throat> now, being a rookie on Lawrenceville, y'all, like, you know, police is cops is cops, and you're going to see cop situations. Just like I explained to y'all about investigating on suspects. Like, after going through that situation, I can never let another CO or officer or sergeant, anybody in administration rock me to death about I'm cool. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, they're cops, and you can't trust them. Just like they'll say we inmates, and they'll never trust us. So that's how I was carrying it from here on out after being on Lawrenceville for years. So around this time, when Officer Green started working, Officer Green was on his job, y'all. I ain't gonna lie, man. Like the way he used to move, <clears throat> he used to move like he was really trying to move up into the ranks. And that was the rumor for a while. Like, you know, he wanted to do good for he can move up into the ranks and be like a lot of other his friends that was working there that moved up into the ranks. And that's how I be in those towns. When they when they work in prison, when they work when the, when the town has a prison in their town. Usually, it's a lot of people you know that work there. It's a lot of family members you know work there. A lot of people be related, and that's all they do is move up into the ranks. <clears throat> that's what they do. So that's what the CO Green was trying to do, man. And when I say that's what he was trying to do, like Lawrenceville was sweet, y'all. Like I'm telling you, like it wasn't a lot of things you had to worry about. Like I've been figuring out the blueprint on Sussex. Like as long as you're quiet, staying out of the way, you're not a loud dude. The business is not out there, and you're not moving reckless. They'll let you do what you want. You know what I mean? Now, when they hear about you, they'll come. And sometimes they hear about you. But if you're moving right, a lot of times they don't. Well, I told y'all, it's prison. You can't never get comfortable. So, with the dude Green, he actually was on the black team. Now, the black team is a team of COs that actually get together to run down on dudes. Like, they might run down on you early in the morning. They might run down on you late night. It depends. But when you see the COs wearing the black, it's never a good thing. It's never a good thing, man. So this dude Green was just like so extra. You don't see him just like on his job. Like when he come in your cell and, it's a, and he blitz your cell, like he'll just be extra with it. Like he'll just come in there and just tear up even more, tear up worse, throw stuff everywhere. Just he was just a straight a hole, man. I have to say he was an a hole, man. Like nobody liked him. He go from wearing the black to tearing dudes off sometimes, running down on certain dudes, running down on cool dudes, good dudes that was out there getting money for years, like and ruining their career. He was ruining their career by getting them sent off there. Because if you get caught with a phone or a big amount of drugs, you out of there. Lawrenceville is done. Kiss good Lawrenceville goodbye. Go back to them state prisons. You know what I mean? With the, with the crazy COs and the white dudes, as maniacs. That's what you're going to have to go through after leaving Lawrenceville, man. So, like, he ended a lot of careers at a rookie stack at a time when he first started working. Like, I started just noticing how he was and not off the rip. Like, I just had a bad taste in my mouth every time I seen him, man. Like, he started tearing dudes off that had to whine. He started like messing like he started running plays like when dudes go to child hall, like when you go eat, like the, the bar to leave, it'd always be some dudes to stay, but usually the COs would be waiting out front of the building for the bar, the bar to return from child for they can patch you down. Not really patch you down, they patch you down and leave the child hall. They waiting for the bar to return, so they just watching the perimeter. So that's where they be at. But he used to wait till dudes go to child. And when dudes go to child, he used to double back and go do a round. And he used to, if he smell wine, because when people make him, the wine game on Lawrenceville is like the craziest I've ever seen. Like, they, the wine, everybody makes wine. Niggas is, dude, dudes is getting drunk on Lawrenceville, like real drunk. Like, because the wine game is serious. Dudes is making good wine. Dudes was making clear on, on, on Lawrenceville. Like, your birthday come up, the, 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 the dude that make the clear, you sell $50, man, you'll get a, a water bottle full of clear, man. Clear. In penitentiary yard is actually wine burnt off into clear liquor. It looks like tequila, it looks like vodka, it looks like whatever white liquor it is. And when you drink it, it tastes like some strong alcohol. And man, dudes used to buy that, man. I done bought a few of them, man. That y'all get you litty. It gets you litty. I'm talking about big market dude. I know a dude that made good money off that. So when he started tearing dudes off, Dudes started hating him, man. Like, I promise you, like, dudes really hated his guts. Like, he was just like an all-around psycho. And he wasn't even in our building. I was in 30 building at this time. I was in 30 building on Lawrenceville. And my building had a lot of real dudes in there. A lot of dudes that's been quiet, getting money, staying out of the way. Dudes been doing that. Now, my building, y'all, is actually where well, I told y'all was 30 building. Now, they actually have two sides to Lawrenceville. On one side is the south side. That's... 30, 40, and 50 building. They have three buildings. All of them identical. All of them have the same design. And then you go into the inside. It's a one part. It's a two part. And it's a three part. The two part in every building is kind of longer and bigger. And it holds probably like 20 extra people. So instead of 88, they probably got 100 and some change at the most. 
but it's an honor pod, and usually that's what that part is used for. It's for, used for honor pods. Now they have honor pods on Lawrenceville. That's for dudes that get more privileges. There's two microwaves in there. There's more phones in there. It's just better. It's just a better situation. You want really chill, lay back, a little older. Just younger dudes was in there too, but cool younger dudes, not no wild younger dudes. Like they just ain't let anybody up in there. So it was a good part to be in. Now on the south side, it was the same setup. They buildings were 60, 70, and 80. So that's what they had. They had six buildings on the compound with a fence in the middle. My side was the south side. This side was the uh I mean my side was the north side, the other side was the south side. So that's how long it was designed. This dude running around tearing dudes off all around the compound. So his name is just ringing. Green, man, that dude green. He did yeah, do the cop, man. Watch him. Watch everybody talking. That's what it is. Watch him. He tearing the wine off. I'm talking about at one point, dudes trying to run a play on him, y'all. That's my word. They try to pay, they try to pay the homosexual to, to say they touched him just to get him out of the building. I'm talking about Lawrenceville get wicked like that. <laughs> That's how wicked Lawrenceville get, man. Like you in there, like you want some super cop stuff, man. Like dudes will try to get you out they building. Like, because usually if there's somebody in there going crazy like that, the unit manager didn't save him. I mean, send him. Usually the unit manager building be cool. Out that whole all, all those six buildings out his name, y'all. It's probably probably two a hole uh, unit managers, and I think the name was Kelly, and one of them name was uh, Black Jesus. I can't remember his last name, but I used, that's what they used to call him. He was a black dude. He was mean as hell, and he was in seventy. He was seventy building unit manager. Never been there. I'm so glad. But Green go from tearing dudes off, y'all. Let me get back to the story. Green go back from tearing dudes off to now. They got him working in the visiting room. That was a bad idea. Why y'all put that man in the visiting room? Man, listen, y'all. The visiting room, that was the sweetest visiting room I've ever been in in my life. That visiting room was beautiful, man. I'm talking about, like, you get away with murder in Lawrenceville visiting room. Like, no problem. Trust me. I'll get to that later. But with him working in the visiting room was a good thing. Now, around the time when I'm moving and shaking, if I hear he working in the visiting room, I'm liable to tell my people, hey, look, I'll just catch you another time. No, sir. Because dude was too crazy. Like, it wasn't even like that. Like, when you come out the visiting room and you get shook down, you know, you this is how the visiting room is set up in Lawrenceville. When you leave the visiting room in Lawrenceville, you leave from the, where, your, where your visitors are at, and then they make you sit in a chair. There's some chairs that be right there, or they make you stand by the wall. Either way, you wait until you go get shook down. Now, there's four or five dudes, they'll just open up a door. And that door they open up leads to a bullpen. Now, this is a bullpen area, y'all, where uh, just think about when you're in the jail, you about to go to court, you know, at a bullpen when you're waiting to go. To, that's what a bullpen is. So that's what they make you come in. Sit, they make you come sit in there before you go into the shakedown. Now, the shakedown was beautiful. And with that bullpen, it made everything else more beautiful. But the dude Jones, like, they used to grab dudes two at a time to shake them down. It might be another CO and, a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and an inmate. But... The dude Green, he used to, he was just, he was like also awesome, trying to change it up. He started doing not two people at a time, one person at a time. So it'll be a line of dudes waiting to go get um, script search, ready to go back to the building after seeing eight people. So you got to go one at a time to go heads up with this psychopath. So when he used to call you in the jump, he used to make you squat and cough on some extra stuff. Like you might squat and cough. You know, they ain't even on it like that. So you take your clothes off, you handle your clothes. You know what I mean? They patch your clothes down, they patch your underwear, they pat all that. Turn around, squat, and call. A lot of the dudes that work there, they didn't even look. I used to look out my parenthesis, and a lot of dudes didn't even look when you do that, man. Because if I was working, I probably wouldn't look. I, I'm not caring if I can see something up somebody's butt or something like that, man. I'm not on it like that, man. I'm telling you, if I was a CEO, I wouldn't do that, man. So a lot of dudes didn't do it. But this dude, Green, used to be like, squat and call. You squat and call. No, you ain't squat and call. Go down lower. Go down lower. What are you talking about? Like, he was just extra. I can remember one time I was in the visiting room, and it was a standoff between him and another inmate because this particular inmate, I don't know what he had and if he had something or not, but he bucked. He bucked. They had to call everybody back there. And the reason why he bucked is because the dude, Green, he got him back there in the shakedown. He's telling him, squat and cough. So he squat and cough. Spread your butt cheeks. He spread his butt cheeks. He came up with some new stuff. He said after he spread his butt cheeks, he told him open his mouth like this. Now you open him. He told him open his mouth, move your tongue. He like what? Man, I just touched my butt and did it. I'm not doing that, man. You crazy? So you can hit him back there. All right. He like man, you better do it. You can go to jail. And I'm saying in my head like, damn, I'm like it's like for real, for real. Like I caught a glimpse of that on Sussex. Like but a lot of dudes like you will start to see like a lot of officers, man. They'll get that prison job. And it'll be the only time in their life they'll feel like they got one up on a real dude. And when you got that job, it's like you got 
an extra heart. Like, you know, of course you, you tell us what to do. We're locked up. We work. Y'all got to come and work. You're going to tell us what to do. But it would be certain um, CEOs that have abused that, man. How you going to tell someone after spreading their butt cheeks with their hand, to put their hand in their mouth, to open it up so they can see, you can see under their tongue? How wild is that, y'all? That's wild, man. Dude bucked on him. It was a standoff. They called the white shirts. They came in. They talked to him, man. White shirts told dude to go back to the building, man. You know what I mean? Everybody looking at Jones like, that's what you get, man. Like, he was super cop the whole time in the back just watching like, like, yo, like, it's prison, man. Like, what can we do? It's prison. It's prison, man. But it was wild, man. But that man was in the visiting room, man. He was running down on people's tables. He was running down on people, man. He was just on his job. He was on his job, y'all. Now that was that was CO Green. That man wanted to be a sergeant, and that man was on his job. Now, let me get to his baby mom. His baby mom was a CO named Officer Dauda. Now, they kind of started around the same time, which I'll say 2013, 2013-ish, you know, around that time. I don't know if it was the middle of 13 or end of 13, but they really wasn't there super duper long. You know what I mean? I I, I say a couple years they was there. You know what I mean? But when she first started working, I remember when she came through with the rookies. You know what I mean? And like I told y'all how it was with Sussex when the rookies came through. Now, when she came through, it was a whole different ball game. You know what I mean? Because she, was, she wasn't she was ugly at all. She was she was attractive, to be honest with you, man. You know, she was a nice, pretty face to look at. Um, she was light brown skin. She had long hair. You know what I mean? Her body wasn't really all that. She was okay, you know what I mean? But her personality kind of matched. You know what I mean? Her face and a lot of dudes used to like her, man. Like, I remember my one time my homeboy was down on the top at one point, on one point, man. I was happy to see that because me and her job was all right because she used to work out. When she, I told y'all when she was, well, I didn't tell y'all, but when she first started, she started working 30 billion when she first got her post. But before her post, it was a lot of dudes down on the top. So when she finally got her post, she started 30 building. My homeboy was down on the top. So I was happy to see that, man. You know, me and her had a good rapport. Like, you know, she'll see me. She knew my last name. And they call you by your last name in there a lot. That's what they do. So she'll call me by my last name. You know, when she walked by and do rounds, she used to speak to me and my roommate. You know what I mean? Like, we was okay. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, she's a cop. I told you I was on high alert from the sausage jump. Never trust nobody again. But, you know, for the in the beginning, when she first started, man, she was just super cool, man. Like, she used to move around. You know what I mean? When she do her rounds. You'll see dudes stop her on the top tier or whatever she's walking at, and dudes be kicking it, and she'll stop and kick it. You know what I mean? Like, she she won't be one of those CEOs that walk around with her nose up and act like she she ain't got no kicking for nobody. So, you know, dudes will see that, man. Like, dudes are kind of like view a character behind that. Like, so in the beginning of her starting out on, on Lawrenceville, like, she she was all right, CEO. I ain't even gonna lie. She was cool people. Like, I kind of, you know, you know, I ain't had no problem with her. Like, it, everything was love. But she knew about everything that was going on just by not being a, a, a crazy woman, not being a dumb woman. They didn't take rocket scientists to see who the dudes in the pod kind of like, you know what I mean? Cause you know, I, I stay out of the way and there was a few dudes in there kind of like the same way. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot of dudes like that in the building. You know, she will see a lot of dudes. There's so many dudes, 80, it's 80 some people in this, in my pod. There's 80 some people in the pod across the hall and there's a hundred and some people in, in the pod, in the pod too. So she deal with so many different personalities, man. Like, I don't know if it got to her, or what, but through the midst of this, like they came um with a rule kind of like they didn't want nobody like to uh actually like have stuff up in a cell, like you know what I mean, just the small stuff, like don't cover your window. Cause Lawrenceville had those like they had they didn't have the, the big one window like um Sussex too. They had two windows. You had a window under your when you was on the bottom bump, it was a window there, and it was a window right over top of that, but over the top bump, he had a window. So they had kind of like two windows in each cell. So when dudes in the cell, dudes would just throw a pair of pants in that joint. You can throw anything in there real quick because if you was, if your window is kind of like where the boulevard is at, dudes that's actually walking down the boulevard can actually walk by your window and look in your window. So, like, of course, I used to have my junk covered up at all times. So they came with some old BS rule. And around this time, you know, she did, she knows she's been working there a little bit now. She done came to our building. She done did her thing. Everybody cool with her. But she did a 360. She just started snapping out, y'all. And when I say snapping out, she just started moving around like, <laughs> like I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to ruin everybody's career, man. I don't care about nobody no more. Forget everybody, forget this, forget that. And she just started writing charges and just doing a bunch of petty stuff. And you would just hear her doing this. I'm like, uh, my face is like this, but trust me, in my mind, I'm like, this is, I, this is how, this is what they do though. They rock you, and then after they rock you, 
they they come with they come with who they really are, and that's being an extra cop. So she was being an extra cop. I ain't even gonna lie. She was running around being an extra cop, and everybody was mad at her. Next thing you know, what she doing, y'all? She tearing off wine like her boy, like her baby daddy. Now, around this time, the rumor that came out that that's that's his girl. Now, nobody knew that this was that was his girl. You know what I mean? I didn't even know. And I'm plugged in there. Like, I be trying to know everything. I'm super nosy. I want to know everything in prison. I need to know what's going on so I can make my moves the way I need to make my moves and think and, and, and see how I want to see it. And that way, if I know everything, it makes everything much easier. So I know everything. I never heard they was together. And there's relationships up there. Like, you will see relationships at Lawrenceville because you'll see dudes start to come. Like, his girl might be working over here and he'll come work over there and he'll just be popping up all the time. You might see a girl in the booth. Next thing you know, it's a certain CO dude that's always in the booth. He don't even be in our, you know, he's not even to our building, but you'll see him in a booth while on his lunch break or just anywhere. So it was like, you know what I mean? Like, I seen love affairs. Like, I seen people in relationships up there. Like, I seen it. It's happened a few times up there. Ask anybody that was in Lawrenceville. It happened like that. So, around this time right here, everybody's putting the pieces together. It's like a joke in the pod that, yo, like, she she, she just ended up tearing the dual wine off probably like a week ago. And it was somebody's birthday coming up, man. He made, he had the junk. It was almost done. Dude, birthday was falling on the weekend. And she worked that Thursday, man. And she did a round. And she did a round. She act like she didn't smell it. So she walked past. We all out in the pod. She walked by. She act like she didn't smell it. But I seen her looking dude sell. But I wasn't thinking she was going to do what she was going to do. She do her round. She finish her round the whole building. Next thing you know, police noise, y'all. <laughs> you hear the police noise, shit crazy. The police noise come. You look up. It's her and two sergeants coming in the pod. They go straight to dude sale. Go in his cell, man. Find the wine. They come out with a big ass bag. You know what I mean? Niggas is like, that old bro, birthday jump, man. Dude was from the R. Uh, he was super mad. Like, I, I'm talking about, like, he was so mad, man. Like, he, like, he wanted to spit on her real talk because, you know, dudes will put a lot of time and energy into making that wine. You got to babysit it all night. It's all type of stuff you got to do. You might put a lot of money into that wine. Like, you might go to the store and order, like, $50 worth of product just to throw in that wine. And the jump don't make it. And, you know, Lawrenceville sweet wine usually make it. But with people like that working, it wasn't going to make it. So I'm like, damn, I just felt bad. I'm like, that's crazy. But I'm just saying who she is, though. Because as I was out in the pod, I pinned that she looked in the cell when she did a round, and she didn't, and she went and got help. Came back, blitz through the cell, man. So I'm like, this chick, wow, man. So, you know, you know what I mean? She'll still walk by, hey, white, you know what I mean? All right, yeah, what's good? You know what I mean? That's all I have for No kick it, none of that. So, boom. My homeboys and them, I had two homeboys, y'all. You know, it, 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 around this time, I'm talking about, I was in the cell with my homeboy, Ballhead. That was my roommate. That was my guy. You know what I mean? My guy was in there with me, man. Then across the hall, man, my homeboy, Tough Money and Los was over there. So that was the little squad right there, man. It was us four. You know, I used to rock with them two over there. And, you know, I didn't have to rock with nobody in the pod because my roommate was in the pod. Like, that was, I used to just rock with him. Dudes was cool. It was cool dudes in there, but the dude I actually rocked with the hardest was my roommate. So, like, I just used to be chilling. I'm out of the way. <laughs> Staying out the way, Trey. I've been staying out the way. So, like, that's what I used to do. But at this particular time, y'all, I have a cell phone. Me and my roommate, we have a cell phone. So, boom. My my homeboys across the hall, Tough Money and Lowe's, they had just got a cell phone. Now, we make plays together. Now, we make plays. I'm making plays together. Like, I'll make a play and put all my homeboys in the car where everybody can get some money. You know what I mean? That's what I used to like to do. I like to put my guys in the car. I don't want to be the only one with the pack if, I, if, it's, if it's up to me. You know what I mean? I don't want to be the only one with the pack. So I used to put all my guys in the car and everybody would eat. So we, while we making plays together, you need a phone. Like, and I used to always let them use the phone, but they, they trying to definitely get a phone. You know what I mean? Because getting a phone in Lawrenceville is nothing. So boom, they finally get a phone. The phone didn't last though, man. They got the phone. I'll say that don't lasted probably about two weeks, if that. And the reason for that is because as soon as they got the phone, a murder in the building happened. <laughs> That's my word. Somebody died. Somebody got murdered in our building, man. But that was my first time witnessing something like that happen, too. I mean, when that happened, I was thinking, because I know if a murder happened on Sus, it's like, it's over with. Y'all go in your cell. Y'all not coming back out probably until next month. You know what I mean? Like, they be on it like that. So on Lawrenceville, when it happened, my man and them used to pay a dude to hold the job. You know what I mean? So I guess when that murder happened, the people that actually did the murder was in my man pod. So... I guess the dude was on panic time. They locked they locked that whole building down when that happened, y'all. Our whole building went on lockdown. Boom. You know what I mean? The whole building went on lockdown. 
the dude that was on the phone with my man, and I guess he got cold feet. And when he got cold feet, he he know the, the, the murderers is in his paw, so he probably like, they're going to come crazy in here. But if he just would have held on a little bit more, he would have noticed that they was going to catch the dudes that did it anyway, and they probably wasn't going to kill the whole pod like that. You know what I mean? Because the dudes that did it, Lawrence had cameras, all type of stuff. The dudes that did it, like, it was, you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't, they weren't going to get away with it. It's hard to get away with murder in prison. Like, on the street, you can, it's hard to get away with murder. Imagine a penitentiary where you're in, in a box and there ain't nowhere to go. You got to be a magician. You know what I mean? So, long story short, the dude that was holding the jack for him, man, he panicked, man. They they came in there. He got scared. Flushed they jack, man. Now my homeboys ain't got no jack no more. They had just got a jack. They just paid 500 for a jack. And now the jack is gone. So, boom, they put us on lockdown for probably about, oh, five days. It wasn't even, I promise you, like, I was thinking it was about to drag us, but it was probably like five days. Like, five days they let us off lockdown. So, we come off lockdown. We trying to make a play. We trying to make a play immediately. Now, around this time too, y'all, it was a, it was a CO, it was an older woman CO that used to work in the booth as well. She never really came out the booth at all. You would never see her out the booth at all. I got her to came, I got her to come out the booth a couple of times. But this lady, me and her had a good rapport. I ain't gonna really say she liked me. I think she did kind of like me a little bit, but you know, I knew she was way older, like older than me. I was in my my um early. I was probably in my uh like 29, 30, or maybe thirty. I think I was thirty. You know, I, yeah, I probably was 30, 29, 30, but she was already like in her 50s. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, like, me and her was cool, though. She used to rock with me, man. The reason why I used to rock with her because she used to let me shoot the pod to pod. Sometimes I have to do that. And, like, you can sneak and do it anytime you want to, but, like, it's much better when green light, she used to open the door, boom, let me in the jump, and let me out when it's time to dip. That's why me and her was cool. So, this lady with me and her being cool, you know what I mean? My man and I'm just using the phone. We just come off lockdown. So, of course, we're trying to make a play, y'all. We have to make a play. We've been on lockdown. I'm gagging. I need some good weed. Let's make a play. So, that was the motivation of after lockdown, let's make a play. Now, around this time, Officer Dawuda is working. She's working in the building. So, I know I got to be careful with her. But at the end of the day, like, I don't let her see me do stuff. So, like, I can get around her. You know what I mean? But you just got to be smooth. So, the lady that was working in the booth, I hit the button. I asked her. Can I go holler at my man? And when they do outside rec, I was like, just let me out before um outside rec get back. She was like, bet, it's good, you good. So she let me over there. Now, when I went over there with the jack, I know my, my roommate was a little skeptical because he know we just coming off lockdown. You know what I mean? But I know they need to use it. These are my dogs, so I know they need to use the phone. So I'm trying to hurry up and let them use it. Go over there and get messed up in the process because I know they got weed and drinks over there. You know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to go over there and party real quick. So as they use the phone, that's what I did. I went over there and potted, y'all. I went over there, took some drinks, you know what I mean? Smoked some weed, music banging, watching the game. We chilling, you know what I mean? That's how Lawrenceville was. They using the phone, everything, love. So they took care of their business. So after they took care of their business, after they took care of their business, it's time to roll. Now, I look, when I looked out the window, I, I saw that they was letting dudes out the gate because it's time for Rhett to come back. Now, I didn't know that was, I'm so, I'm lit, so I didn't know, I'm not lit like I'm drunk, like I'm, I can't see shit, but I just happened to look out his window before I dip, and I seen people coming off the yard, but that was actually a uh, uh, 40 building coming off the yard first. So we in 30 building, so they haven't let my building off the yard yet. So, boom, I just come out, you know, so my homeboy was like, you about to go to the microwave, my other homeboy dip, about to dip his cell. So I'm like, I'm about to dip, I'm like, I'm about to dip, you know what I mean? I haven't even paid no mind. That the cool lady that's in the booth, she went on break. <laughs> she went on break. I didn't even notice this. And it was still not bad if she go on break, but she didn't go on break. I could still ah, blend in, sneak out real quick as the crowd come in. Because when people come back from break, they got all the doors open. One pod, two pod, and three pod. So I got to get back to three. So if the doors are open, everybody's coming in from break, I can just blend in, get to the pod. Easy. You know what I mean? So when I come out, I'm waiting for the door to open. So the door is not open yet. My man go downstairs to the microwave. So I'm stopped like right at the top of the steps. I'm talking to a dude from Richmond. I was on Sussex with. He see me like, what's good? We get to talking, we kicking it. You know what I mean? But I'm just, I got my back to the steps kind of like, you know, like the little island part of the steps where the trash can be at. Like my back is to there and I can see the door. So I'm just waiting for the door to open so I can slide. I'm still not paying attention who was in the booth. You know what I mean? I'm still not paying attention who was in the booth. So boom. Next thing you know, as I'm talking to my homeboy, all you hear is this. We talking. Next thing you know, you hear white. 
get your ass back to your bar now. I'm like, oh, damn. I'm like, then I look, it's the hooter. I'm like, damn. You know what I mean? I'm not worried, but I got the jack on me. The jack is in my pocket. There's no hidden part, no hidden department in Lawrenceville. You didn't need that. The jack is in my pocket. It's sweet on Lawrenceville. They didn't need that. Phone is in my pocket, y'all. So I'm like, wow. She just put me on blast like that. So I'm like, oh, all right, okay, all right. <laughs> you got, all right, okay. Like, relax. You know what I mean? I got you. I got you. I got you. She, she ain't saying. She just looking. So I come down the steps. I come down the steps. The door ain't open yet. So when I get to the jump, I hit the intercom. You told me to go to my pod, right? Open the door. The door open. Bloom. She let me out. I walk to my, my, walk to my door. Nobody's coming in from wreck yet. I'm like, what the hell is going on? I walk to my door. When I go to my door, hit the button. You gonna let me in my pod? No answer. She don't ever come to the jump. She don't say nothing. She don't do nothing. So I didn't know this particular time that the sergeant dude, Quizbury, was actually in our building. Now, let me tell y'all who Quizbury is real fast. Quizbury is kind of like the, one of the only white dudes that work at Lawrenceville. There wasn't a lot of white dudes at Lawrenceville. And that's what made that prison different because that prison is all black. <laughs> that prison dark as hell. I'm telling y'all, Lawrenceville is super dark. So he was like one of the only couple of white dudes that worked there, man. He worked his way up to the rack, um, ranks and he became a sergeant. Now, when he worked, you got to be on point because really all he cared about is that wine. He's going to tell your wine off if you smell it. So if he worked your building, it's just y'all bad luck. Y'all better be on point. You better hide your wine in the shower. You better do something because majority of the time he's going to find it. That man had a nose like a bloodhound for that wine. So that was his thing. Now, tearing you off of something else, if he catch you and see you, he would tear you off of something else. But you can't be that stupid to let him do it because you already know what time it is with this man. So he's in the building. And matter of fact, I'm going to tell y'all who he put you in the mind of, the dude Quizberg, because he had a big old head kind of. And he was a regular white dude, but he looked like the agents from um, The Matrix. <laughs> That's the word. That's what they used to call him, the agent from The Matrix, man. That's Y'all remember the agent from The Matrix? That's who Quizberg looked like. So... You had to be on point, point blank with him. So I didn't know he was there. So I'm stuck in the hallway with the jack. So now my roommate, everybody coming to the jump. But when I look up, I see her. Now, when you're in the hallway, when you're in what's called a salad port, when you're in the salad port of your building, um, the booth is on top of your head. Like that's where the booth is at. So they have three little windows. It's not a window. It's just a, a big clear square on this side. A big clear square on this side and the front is another big clear square. So just in case they got to see what's going on downstairs, like they can look what's going on under them. You see what I'm saying? So I'm under her. So as my roommate and I'm coming to the door, I see her. I see her sneakers. She like right there. I see her sneakers. I see her hair. She's just looking. It's, it looks foggy from our view looking at Nate Jump. But from Nate Jump, it's clear. I know it's clear. So she's looking. So that stopped me. I was about to slap my roommate the phone because I just felt not saying was just feeling like it was off. I don't want to lose my phone. So I'm on point. You know what I mean? I'm about to slide, but I seen her. It's like she was watching me, so I, I stopped, stopped. So my other homeboys come to the door, the old, the other part, I was just saying, they like, you straight? I'm like, man, I don't know, I don't know. Next thing you know, he like, yo, bro, she telling Quizberg. I'm like, Quizberg? So he like, he in 32 part. So I did like this, so 32 part is in the middle, so it's right in front of me. Each part door has a, a window on it, like a, 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 like a window this long. This big, and you can see in their pod. Like if their door was closed, you can just go up to their jump and look through their window. Be like, do do do. Hey, call such and such. Like everybody has a window. So when I do like this to look, I see the dude Quizbird. He on the top tier and thirty two pod. So I guess when they saying she telling Quizbird, she trying to get his attention. So she trying to get his attention to call him. So when I look, he coming down the steps. I'm like, oh, I'm. What, what I'm gonna do? What I'm gonna do? What I'm gonna do, y'all? What I'm gonna do? I know she will get me back like this. Don't do me like this. You can't get a nigga back like that. Not like that, man. I know she trying to tear me off and end my career. Don't do this, Dahuda. What is going on? Because, and that reason why I'm hysterical like this, y'all, because you don't usually see this on Lawrenceville. Now, dudes get took off when they being stupid. Now, I was being slightly stupid because I didn't supposed to be in another part, but I told you I got the green light from the lady. You know what I mean? And every time I ever did it, it was a smooth situation. You know what I mean? It's just this now, the same lady that come by and speak, what's up, white? Like everything all love. Now she's trying to end my career. I'm like, Lord, man. Only thing I can do, y'all, is think fast. I was on my toes immediately. My man came to the door. When I looked, everything happened fast. I looked in 32 part. Now he's coming down the steps. He's not running, but he's coming. 
It's coming down the steps in 32 part. They part a little longer, so they steps is not closer to the doors like how the other parts is. He got a little walk. So as he coming down the steps, I said, I just slid that joint on my homeboy. He got it. The door open. She said, where you get him? She come on the intercom. Word. She come on the intercom. What you just get him white? I'm like, what? Man, what the hell? I'm like, man, what the hell, man? This lady is wow. She's really trying to do me dirty. Quizbury opened the door. Boom. Quizbury come out 32 part. She said, white this gates. He was like, what? He was like, turn around. I was like, turn around, like, turn around. I'm out of order, so I gotta comply. Cause I don't even, I'm in the hallway. I don't even supposed to be in this hallway. Everybody from my pod looking, people from 32 pod looking, people looking for my man pod. When I turn around, they gave my man some time to slide off. He slide off, but she's watching everything. She, he told me to pack, he told me to turn around, hit me real quick. I ain't had nothing on me, nothing to feel bulky or nothing like that. But just imagine if I was still had that phone on me, able to tap me down. I'd been done. I'd have been done. That man, I'd have been done. My Lawrenceville time would have been done all because of this lady Dao. And that was crazy, man. You know what I mean? But Boom. My man, he had time to slide. He dipped off. Homeboy Tough Money dipped off with the phone. I, I slid it to him. Tough Money on extra point. Tough Money got that joint slid. So by the time she said, Quizbird, he gave the cretin. He gave the cretin. That's my man. Now I'm like, <laughs> oh, I'm just like this. If you can see my man, my man, like an emoji or something, it'll be like, no, no. Only thing I can think, y'all, was the phone was gone. And then through the whole process of this, I was praying and hope I ain't get my homeboys tricked up, man. Because it was our phone. It was me and, me and my homeboy ball here phone. So I was like, damn, I feel bad if I got them tricked up. Or even just something to just send them to the hole. Like anything. I was just hoping everything plays smooth. So my homeboy on point, when she said he got it, my homeboy already going up the steps. So he opened the 31 part. He going to 31 part. He called my man's name. Come here. Come here. My homeboy, get you, nigga. You tripping. He go up the steps on his ass. He go up the steps. When he get up the steps, he go to the corner of the of the top tier. Now, every part on Lawrenceville had a handicap sale. It was one on this side of the top tier, one on that side of the top tier. Same thing on the bottom tier, one on this side, one on that side. A handicap sale is for people that are disabled, and on the bottom tier is for people that's like handicapped or in a wheelchair or something like that. There's no top bumps in the bed, it's two bottom bumps. So Lawrenceville was different. Those sales are sweet because they were two bottom bumps now. You were messing around to get one of those sales, man, you won't handicap because that just was a ball sale. But my man ended up making it to the corner of the top tier uh, handicap. And when he got up there, he slid into my old home, my other homeboy. So my other homeboy got it by the time Quizbury get up the steps, he done slid into his roommate. My room, his roommate slid off with the jump. So he seen my uh, homeboy Tough Money go to my other homeboy Loose and he rushed down. So he get down and I'm just standing downstairs, still stuck in the hallway, just like, I hope I ain't get my own boys locked up. The phone will be gone. All type of stuff is going through my brain, y'all. All type of stuff, man. But this is how prison is, man. You can't get comfortable, man. You can't trust these COs. And I never did trust her. You know what I mean? Like, she just was somebody that I have to explain who she was in the beginning. I have to tell y'all this, man. Like, she was cool in the beginning. And then she started being a major cop. You know what I mean? So that was an example of being a major cop, man. So, boom. Now they done call back up. A little bit of backup come. They come in the pod, they come in the building, they see me standing in the hallway looking stupid. What you doing out here? She come on the intercom. He was in 31 pod, he had something up. Told everything. He was in 31 pod, he had something up. What you had up? I had nothing up. I don't know what she's talking about. Man, what you give up? I'm like, man, I don't have nothing. Turn around, pat me down again. They don't find nothing. They don't get nothing off me. They go up in the pod, they don't find nothing. You know what I mean? I don't know they didn't find nothing though. They took my ID. They told me to go to the cell and get my ID. I had to go to the cell, get my ID. I gave them my ID. They wrote me a 229 charge. I told y'all, 229 charge is a charge where they write you up for being somewhere you're not supposed to be. You know what I mean? And I, I definitely was in 31 part. But dudes on me getting wrote up for doing that, maybe dudes in my part. I'm in 33 part. My homeboy might come over there and holler at me and me and, and me and ball head. Like that was normal activity as long as you move, right? But this lady though, man, she got crazy. She got crazy, man. But I went back in the cell, man. I just like, damn, my bro was like, man, that's crazy. I'm like, man, I hope they ain't flush it or, you know what I mean? Cause you liable to hear anything like, dude, my, my homeboy might've been like, they had to flush it. Like a dude ain't gonna go to the hole for it. But thanks to my homeboy, Tough Money was a veteran. You know what I mean? They was able to make a move, man. They got by that lady, man. We beat her. <laughs> he told me later on that night, like, yo, I still, cause you can talk to them through the door. You can stand on the top tier. You can see somebody and they can give you a hand gesture or something like that. He gave me the he gave me the hand gesture that everything was good and I was happy. I was like, 
You hold that junk. I'll get it from you tomorrow. This is too much going on. Hold the phone. You know what I mean? So I went to sleep feeling all right, man. But the whole time me and bro was in the cell, we were just talking like, damn, like shorty go from super duper, <laughs> super cool to like really trying to, she trying to get me sent. You know what I mean? This lady speak to me all the time. You know what I mean? She trying to get me sent, man. And now that I've been wanting to take, man, like I'm not even mad at her for real for being who she was. You know what I mean? Because that's who they are. Like it's already in their heart to be who they are. You will have CEOs come in there, even women. Like they'll come in there and a lot of them will be cops. But some of them just be like like people that just understand that y'all know I have to do my job. That comes first. But I'm not going to give y'all a hard time. Y'all don't give me a hard time. And like that's respectable. That's respectable for anybody to understand. Like, you know what I mean? If someone tell you that, like, we'll respect that. Like, yo, you ain't got to worry about nothing. Like, there's some crazy stuff going on. We used to police ourselves up there. Like, you know what I mean? Like, dudes ain't going to come in there and be wild. There's a lot of situations going on. Like, yo, we don't want no wild stuff in the bar. And that's just how Lawrenceville was. You couldn't go in certain parts. You made them like one of them young wild dudes always bringing the police to the park. Dudes ain't with that. Dudes will speak up on that and dudes will pull up on you about that. And that's just how Lawrenceville was, man. So like, I don't really blame her for being who she really was, man. She was young, man. You know what I mean? She was a young girl with a job. She had kids to feed. She had to do what she got to do, man. But I was just mad I was on the menu. <laughs> I don't know why she put me on the menu to get eight, man. She tried to get me out of there. She tried to get me out of there, y'all, man. She tried to get me out of there. So from that day on, me and her was like, yo, look, she wouldn't even speak to me no more after that because she already knew the count. I wouldn't even look at her. If I see her coming, like if I'm standing on the top 10, she making a round, I'll just go on my cell and get behind my cut on my bed. I have a cut on my bed. I just lay back. She can't see my face, see my leg. I don't even want to see you. I have no respect for you, man. Like right now, I don't, man. Like at the end of the day, that was wild how you carried it, man. So boom, a little bit of time after this, y'all. She just started getting into it with dudes. Like, you know what I mean? Like, every time you look up, she's getting into it with a dude. She had a smart mouth. Her mouth was just super, like, just crazy smart. And she stayed getting into it with dudes, man. And when she talked junk to you, your mama this. Get F your mama. You gay. You take it in the butt. Pause. Like, she just had a funk, a crazy, like, ill, dirty mouth. So getting an argument with her was a no-no. Definitely. That's why I never, like, snap on her about what she did. I don't want to argue with you, man. You ain't going to get me super mad. So I'm not arguing with you, period. So dudes used to feed into that, man. So one day she get to arguing with a dude over in the same part. I was 229 in my man part. And she called a man a snitch. So when she called that man a snitch, bah! They said, dude, smack fire from him. Man, they said, dude, smack their head off. You hear me, y'all? They said, dude, smack their head off, man. That's my word, man. They said she ran out the pod, said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get somebody to do this, that, that, that. They called the people. People came in there. They locked dude up, man. Now, for real, for real, like, after that happened, she went on leave. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, I was happy about her being gone. I wasn't really happy about dude putting his hand on a woman, even though she was petty. A lot of dudes were like, that's what she did. Da, da, da. <clears throat> excuse me, y'all. But, I mean, like, that's kind of what she get. But at the same time, I don't believe in hitting women. Like, that's never been my repertoire. You know what I mean? Something I believe in, man. Like, even though she tried to end my career, at the end of the day, I don't hit women, man. But I was happy about her being out of the building. They put her on leave, and next thing you know, she wasn't in our building no more. You know what I mean? After that smack. That's what it took to get her out the pod, out the building. So, boom. She's out the building. Her baby daddy, C.O. Jones, is still up to his old shenanigans, man. He's pushing to be sergeant. He want to be sergeant bad. He's doing extra. He's doing extra in the V-room. He's doing extra running around the other side of the, uh, the compound on the south side, tearing stuff over down over there, coming outside, helping him tearing stuff down over there. Like, they was just like the dynamic duel on the low. <laughs> like, they was the dynamic duel. I promise y'all, it was crazy. So, boom. Now that she's working the other side, the dude Jones, like, I really wasn't paying him no mind no more like that anyway. You know what I mean? I keep calling him Jones. Not Jones. C.O. Green. The dude C.O. Green. He was running around doing all the maniac stuff still. And his, his baby mama died. I really didn't see her no more. So I started going to school. Now, while I'm going to school, you go to school with the people from the other side of the yard. So you see dudes from 70, 80, 60 building. Like, it's like they'll see dudes from 30, 40, 50 building on the outside. So everybody mingles when it comes to school and program. So that's how you see dudes over there. Now, the dudes over there getting it in, like how we get it in over there. It'd be the same thing going over there that be going on where I'm at. So... When I used to go to school, it was this dude from D.C., man. He was super duper cool. And me and him was in class, and he used to get money, too. So me and him just used to have conversations about what's going on. He used to tell me everything about what's going on on that south side. So he was just telling me about all the CEOs and da da And I was like, dang. So one day I come to school, and he like, yo, you ain't going to believe this, bro. 
you ain't gonna believe this. I'm like, what? He was like, man, guess who bringing the pack over there in 80 building? I'm like, who? He was like, man, guess. I gave him a couple of guesses, y'all. I couldn't guess. I was like, man, just tell me. He was like, man, Dahoud. I was like, Dahoud. He was like, yeah. I was like, what? I was like, man, get out of here, man. You're joking. He was like, man, I'm telling you, man. She, she wilding over there. He was like, man, look, I don't know who this dude is, man, but this dude is a blood. He's a top shot. So he just got on the compound and he went up there long and he bagged her immediately. I'm like, he bagged her? He was like, man, he bagged her. So I'm thinking like, ain't no, don't no baby daddy the super duper cop. Like that's a mean bag right there because you got to worry about that super duper cop. Dude is a super duper cop. So he like, man, I know, man, but he got her, man. He was like, man, I think dude bought her some sneakers. She been running around bragging about that. And he said, and she, you know, the long nails she got. He was like, she got them jaws painted solid red. She said she a blood now. You know what I mean? He was like, every time she get to argue with a dude, a different dude, she'll say she going to get them. And like, he's like, man, she just a mess over there. He was like, bro, I'm telling you, she don't got long. He was like, she don't got long. I'm telling you. So it's hard. It's crazy hearing this. I'm like, what? He was like, man, she don't got long. She don't got long up there. She's wild and she's getting into it with dudes. She's bringing the pack. She mess with dude. That's a blood. You know what I mean? Everybody know. I'm like, damn, that's wild. That's wild right there. So it was crazy hearing that, man. I went back and told my bro in the cell, yo, uh, you like, what? I'm like, yeah, man, this is crazy, man. This is crazy. So, boom. Now, why is she doing that? Like, I told y'all, people don't be having good runs. So, like, I'll say they run was probably like four, five months. Four, five months. Five months, something like that. So, before the run was over with, um, I guess that like, she just got so hot over there, that, like they just moved her. So I told you she started on that side and they moved her to the other side. So now even after all that stuff was going on that she done got smacked on the outside, they brought her back to outside. But I don't think it was permanent. It was just for a day or two or whatever. They just, that's what they do. When you get hot on Lawrenceville, they just move you to another post. So boom, I'm going to child hall to meet somebody. Yo. I just got to meet somebody and get something and drop my tray off to somebody else I was get to and I'm gone. I'm going back to the building. So I go do that. It was the weekend. So I'm going to the park, I'm going to the child hall, I get in the line, as I hit the corner to get to where the trace lot is at, I look, she's right there, she's standing next to the CO that's by the trace lot, so she, when I walked by, she spoke, and that's what blew me, I'm like, it was a, sh it was like a, a little quick shiver that went through me when she, hey, Wyatt, I'm like, what's good, and I just kept it moving, boom, so I done made my move when I had to do in the line, while I was in the line waiting to get the tray, so I just gave my tray away, so I guess she painted, I just gave my tray away, and I was leaving, so as I'm leaving, I get pat down, Boom, 30 buildings right up. The, the, we the closest building from the child hall. When we go into the child hall, we the father's building going to the child because we got to walk all the way around. But when we leave the child hall, we're the closest. So I'm about to go back up the little hill ramp jump. I'm walking up the jump. I hear white. I hear somebody say white. I turn around. It's her. She like, let me talk to you for a second. I'm like, talk to me. So people walking past, like it's not really privacy type of talk, but I stopped. And when I stopped, she walked up on me and she was like, look, you been hearing about what's been going on. This all messed me up that she was saying it. She like, you heard about what's been going on. I'm like, heard about what? She was like, that they, they, they say that I'm bringing drugs and I mess with this dude and I'm blood now and all this. And I'm like, I heard it. <laughs> Definitely did. But I was like, no, I ain't hear that, man. I ain't hear about that. She was like, yeah. She was like, um, I think that's why I'm over here now because when I went and checked my schedule, when I first came in today, they had me for the south side. I mean, for the north side, not the south side. So I told y'all that's what they do. So she slide. You know what I mean? I was like, all right, a little small talk. I dip, but it was crazy just hearing that from him, man. It was crazy hearing that from him, man. So like with all this going on, I don't know how this got under the, the, the dude green nose. Like, how didn't you hear this, Green? Like, if you watching this, like, how didn't you hear this, man? Like, <laughs> how didn't you hear this? Like, she had a full-blown relationship under your nose. You didn't get you the po most police dude on the compound. You didn't catch this. So she got a relationship, man. The jump didn't last long. A little bit after she worked outside for a hot second. I guess that's when dude probably got on fire too a little bit. You know what I mean? And next thing you know, I heard when we woke up for the next morning, we heard that they ran down on dude. You know what I mean? So they said they ran down on 80 building. They caught the dude. He had a jack. You know what I mean? So at first, we didn't hear the rumor in the beginning about what was the reason about the jack and all that. But they said they found the jack. So boom, another rumor come out later on probably like right after the count, that they found a jack and the jack was registered to the dude Green. 
You know what I mean? Y'all hear that shit? The phone was registered to Green. Now y'all know Green, baby mama was messing with the dude. Now the dude get caught with Green phone. Now they were saying it was Green phone, like she stole the phone from her baby daddy and gave it to dude, which was the dumbest thing in the world. And for real, for real, I don't think dude, man, dude, dude was a smart dude, kind of like how he came in and got on real fast. But I don't really think he knew that she took that phone from her baby daddy because he did. He probably wouldn't have took that job. That was just stupid, man. Real talk, like, and she did that stupid stuff. That was stupid on her part. Why would you do that? So they catch dude with the phone. They see that it's registered to Green. The, the police do. So y'all know what Lawrenceville do? They waited for him to come to work. And when he got to work, they say, yo, what is he doing with a phone registered to you? You know what I mean? He what? He don't know what's going on. He don't know what's going on. What phone? What phone? What are you talking about? Lawrenceville walked his ass off that joint, y'all. This phone registered to you. You fired. You done. You done. How can you talk your way out of that, though? But deep down inside, he knew what happened. That man knew what happened, y'all. I'm telling y'all. That man knew what happened the whole time. So he snapped out, well, this is a lie, it's a lie. I want to be sergeant. I'm supposed to be sergeant. I was about to be sergeant. Y'all doing me like this. I ain't bring that man no phone. Da, da, da. So I guess through this whole thing, he putting the pieces of the puzzle together. And he started to think that this, this is what my baby mama did. She had to do this. But I don't know how he missed out anyway through this whole time. How did you not know that she was messing with somebody, bro? Like This is the craziest thing ever. Everybody else knew. How didn't you know? So he snapped out. She wasn't at work. But they say he snapped out. Y'all know what this man did, man. This man left work in a ball of rage, found her, found his baby mama, saw her car sitting there, and he unloaded on her car, y'all. He unloaded on her, his baby mama car. He was that upset that he shot his baby mama car up, and he shot her up. Now, let me say this. I'm not glorifying none of this, like, for real, for real. Like I told y'all, I don't believe in women getting hurt. I'm not with that, regardless of what they got going on. I feel like a woman shouldn't be hurt. You know what I mean? That's how I feel about it. So Officer Dauda, the rumor came out that she was pregnant at the time. And this man done shot her car up and her up. So it, it was wild. So we didn't know that this happened until we was in the room. Lockdown, it was 11 o'clock news. The 11 o'clock news came on, y'all. And we saw it. And we saw it. It says... Officer Jarvis Green has shot up his ex-lover, Dauda, and she was sitting in the car and he unloaded. Now, for anybody who think this is capped that I'm saying, the description will be in my link. All y'all got to do is go to the description and hit the link, the article, the, the, the video. It's a video article. Go in there and hit it and look at the article. This happened on Lawrenceville. <laughs> this is happened on Lawrenceville. This is word. It happened on Lawrenceville. The man got so angry. He shot up his baby mama. He shot her car and shot her up, man. Man, they said they, they when we seen the Jonah news, they showed him going to jail. And it was wild. Like, I ain't gonna lie, y'all. It was a bittersweet situation, man. Like, like I didn't want it. I was happy slightly. And I wasn't happy about her being shot. You know what I mean? Because even though she was a cop, she was a woman and she was pregnant. So, like, what he did was some with some with some F-boy stuff, y'all. Like, that was some crazy stuff, man. Like, for real, for real. Like, I'll never let a woman get me that mad that I'm a killer. You know what I mean? And it was wild on his part, man. So when we seen it, it was bittersweet because we, was, we, was, we wasn't happy about what happened with her. But we was really happy that now this same dude that was a super cop that used to make dudes spread their cheeks and do all that, now he got to spread his cheeks. Pause. <laughs> yeah. Now he got to spread his cheeks. Now he got to go through what we go through. Now you have to, bro. There's no more being on the other side. No, you're on the other side now. So now you don't let yourself get that mad. Now you got to go through what we go through. We was happy about that, but we was jive upset about Officer Dauda being shot. She was pregnant, man. That was wild. That was wild on his part. And it's crazy, man. And for real, for real, y'all, this happened in 2015. So I think this man about to go home because I looked him up. I ain't going to say his release date, but I looked it up. I ain't going to lie. They used to look us up in there. So I looked him up. And his release date is the man done done his bid. It's been since 2015. So, you know, they probably gave him a smack on the wrist because he was. it happened in that little town where they was from. You know what I mean? But it was attempted murder at the end of the day. You know what I mean? But they, they, he's, if he about to come home, he really didn't get a lot of time. He probably got 10 at the most. So this man's about to come home, man. But when you come home, little green, you got to deal with what we, what we go through, man. Like, welcome welcome to the real world. Welcome to the world of being a felon, being a felon of somebody, being a felon where you're somebody now that has to struggle with trying to get a job. 
You can't run to the prison no more and let that save you. You get a job with the prison. That's over with. That's a rap, brain. You can't do that no more. You shot up a woman. You shot up your baby mama. So now when you come home, you're going to have to explain to your kids how you, why you shot their mama up. Like, that's wild right there. Like, that's wild. That's a Tyler Perry movie if you ask me, man. Good luck with that, man. That was your fault, man. You hurt a woman. You shot up your baby mama, man. That was wild, man. But, you know, at the end of the day, y'all, this story, man, like I told y'all, man, was bittersweet, man. It was a bittersweet one, man. But anybody who think this cat, man, just go look at the link in my description, man. It's going to be in there. Let's go look at the article, man. And I have to put this at the number one thing. Out of my top three things at Lawrenceville, the craziest things I saw and witnessed, this is the number one one right here, y'all. Because we saw it on the news and it was wow. Everything played out, going through stuff with her in the beginning, going through with him, stuff with him in the beginning. And now they both are gone. They both end up was they both was out of there. They both was out of there. We didn't have to deal with them no more, man. But it was wild, y'all, man. <laughs> like I told you, it was a Tyler Perry movie, man. Like it was this was a wild situation right here that I went through, man. And this is why my stories be long, y'all, because it's 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 it's, it's good. They good stories about real things that I witnessed, man. This was a crazy situation. Go look at the link. It was a crazy situation, y'all. Like witness that, man. That joke was crazy, man. You know what I mean? And I witnessed it. And it's a lot of things I witnessed on Lawrenceville, but that was the top one right there, y'all. But I hope everybody liked the movie. I uh, like the story. I'm about to say movie because that's kind of what it is. I hope everybody liked this movie. You know what I mean? I hope all my truck drivers enjoyed it. I hope everybody at work enjoyed it, man. Thank y'all for watching. Appreciate y'all for turning me up. Keep like, sharing, and subscribing. Keep it going. And what we doing, y'all? We staying our hands out the way. Let's go.